Okay, that is us. We are now live on Facebook. This is the Stribblers Union. Everyone say hello to our adoring audience and everyone that will watch this in the future. Hello. It's great to be here. It's great to be back doing our, our live show again. Um, we had the first two nights of our digital gig series last week and we're now on to night three. Uh, so this is the Scribblers Union. We are a digital writing collective uh, and workshop series, um, which was founded by myself, Kevin Peagle Day. Uh, and we have been making beautiful poetry and we've been doing it since April of last year, which feels unimaginable now that this has been running so long that this this wee project has kind of grown to this extent uh, but it's a fantastic thing and I, I'm very proud of it and I hope that it's something that you're going to enjoy watching tonight so Scribblers Union just to give you a wee bit of background we started off during the, the kind of dark days of lockdown we started off when everything was shut down, that scary period when we all had to stay at home and we weren't quite sure what was going to happen afterwards. And during that time, I, I was no longer able to, to kind of gig and tour and, and do all the stuff that I love to do. Uh, and I also couldn't do the, the workshops that I would do for organisations and schools, etc. So I decided to use this kind of new technology, Zoom, that we were all discovering, uh, and go for it and and start something of my own and and maybe make something happen uh, while I was doing it. And remarkably, I got lots of people interested and remarkably, they all went along with it and we created this thing called the Scribblers Union. Since then, it's grown and grown. We now have four groups um, who are all kind of running concurrently, all with different members, all kind of making their own unique work within that group. So tonight you've got group number three who are all going to perform new work for you this evening. So yeah, we want you as our audience to, to sit back and enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? This is a night of poetry, but it's also, we're very aware, this is a digital space, you know, we're, we're coming directly into your homes. This isn't, isn't in a, a sweaty basement venue somewhere. This is something that's been kind of beamed into your homes on your, your laptop or your smart TV or, or however you're consuming it. So actually what we want to do is we want to get a really nice relaxed vibe. We want you to chill out, get yourself a wee glass of wine, a wee beer, whatever it is, relax, sit down and just enjoy a night of beautiful words, a night of beautiful poetry because there's some incredible work here tonight. Uh, and I can't wait to, to share it with you. We're going to have a poem from, from all our members tonight. They're all going to read a piece. I'll read a few bits in between as well. Um, but really, it's all about them. It's all about their amazing work. It's all about their amazing talent. Uh, and some of these people are performing for the first time tonight, which is just incredible. I love that. And I'm sure that you're expecting, oh, somebody's doing this for the first time, or oh, it might be a bit dodgy. Let me tell you, it will not be because they've been working so hard. They've been doing the work and they've been putting in the effort and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to share all this great work with you this evening. What we need you to do is your, as our audience member on this digital kind of venue that we have, we want you to, to hit like or love or give us all those emojis um, on the post. Let us know what's happening. Let us know what you're liking and loving. Jump into the comments. We're in this space where, you know, we can't get your applause. We can't hear your applause, but we can actually read comments from you in real time. So jump in and let us know. Oh, that line there, that made me cry. That poem was so funny. Whatever you're feeling, we as poets, as artists, we love getting feedback. We love to know what, what was affecting people, what people were engaging with. So, so please jump on the comments and let us know. Don't be shy. Jump in there and, and share with us and, and keep us talking. Um, but the most important thing you can do for us just now is to hit the share button. Share this video on your own timeline so more people can see it. Share this on any groups you think that may enjoy it. You can also copy the link share the link on your Twitter, share it on your Instagram, anywhere out there, 
in the, the digital wilds that you think we could turn up and maybe turn some people onto some brilliant poetry. Go for it, share it and put it out there. <sighs> okay. As I said, I'm Kevin Peagle Day. I'm your, your host for this evening. Uh, I'll just be keeping things going, keeping it running and introducing all the amazing acts. But I'm going to start you off with a little poem of my own just now, uh, which I hope you enjoy. This one is kind of, feels very timely, um, particularly living in Glasgow, particularly with everything that's happening just now around the COP26 conference, um, which from a logistical point of view, I think the, the word is shit show. Um, and it really, really is. Honestly, we're usually better organized than this, but it's a complete shit show. But what it can do is this could be the chance for humanity to get its shit together, to get ourselves on track, to, to make sure that we don't completely burn this fucking planet for future generations. So here's a wee poem about that. <laughs> but of course, as a poet, uh, I have to put myself in the center of everything even an extinction event. So this is called, will there at least be time for a retrospective? I need the world to exist just long enough to declare me a genius. Revisit those overlooked masterpieces, pamper me with posthumous validation, a serious re-evaluation. I need a scholar to find the thematic link between my second collection and my fourth album. Provide what I was never afforded in life. I want goths to scratch my lines into notebooks, teenagers to fuck on my gravestone, a retrospective fool of beard stroking wankers tugging themselves to ecstasy over the inherent themes and thinly veiled subtexts in my decomposing body of work. But I worry. I worry that future generations will read my words and my woes will feel so small to them. Look at this old poet lamenting his career as he was living like a king in the last days of Rome, condemning us to the bleakness of an unforgivable future. Because he created art while the world burned, talked to himself incessantly and engaged with his ear as hate in all the most performative of ways, like this was all for him. A film set for the small-scale drama, of his brief blink of an existence, while the air petered around him, slow as an oven, the real narrative unfolding, while he tried to conjure some meaning in the spaces between the words. And when the end inevitably comes, collect the detritus my ambition left behind, the little bags of poems, the books, the CDs, the records, the piles of scripts spoken by actors long since departed, that one novel that no one ever published, and dump them in a wheelbarrow. Push it to the top of the highest hill, just as the water begins to rise, and read. Read all my words aloud and hear me, hear all my stunted attempts at connection, all the times I tried to share a little of me with you, the ideas that brought me joy and all the things that scared me. Give me my retrospective, finally, at the top of a hill at the end of the world. And when the sun sets that final time, you do what you must. Set fire to the remnants of my life and sit for a few minutes in the silence, appreciating the simple pleasure of a warm goodbye. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready for our first act of this evening? Yeah, we're up for it. Yes, 
I can feel the excitement emanating through my screen. We're ready for it. Let's give a big round of applause to our first member to take the stage. Go wild at home. Make her feel very welcome. It's Anne. Hello. So this poem was written on the back of a prompt that Kevin gave us, um, and it's called Missing. I miss mirrors and perspiring floors where rubber soles seek out traction. I long for loud music and mysterious folks' limbs, dripping sweat, laced with fresh satisfaction. I yearn for numbers and soothing frequencies, wrapping sweet notes around both lungs. I remember the foot pedal demanding attention while bringing peace to mother tongues. Jesus, this desire is quenched but never fucking wet. I miss flying elbows and spinning heads and dodgy selfies. Being off balance screams pleasure in tons. I hear the near rolling, hip jerking swing of loose joints and the tap, 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 tap of two feet doing a dance off one against one. Bloody hell, so much of the night's lino has been whipped from my palms. So I tease myself with the Adidas gazelles and the sounds of an average white band. I crave our skins will bend and flex to urging vibrations at the end of the bar. I picture the nodding head of the DJ to urging vibrations at the end of the bar. I picture the nodding head of the DJ standing on their podium serving vinyl caviar. I don't know what comes next, but I daydream to meet you on the floor, tripping an adrenaline at the door, stretching, waiting for a way in. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Anne. What a great poem to kick off our evening. Um, and I feel one that we can all relate to. Uh, a great performance that really brought that to life, that amazing feeling of being in a, a place of live music that we've all missed so much and has kind of came back to us in the last month or so. Uh, so yeah, amazing stuff. Thank you very much for sharing that with us and great work to, to start off our evening. Um, okay, we're, we're, going to, we're going to get a special performance now. I can't wait for this. Uh, everyone at home, make some noise for the the, f the man who will not be stopped by any public transport. He is Mark. Hello, I am Mark. I may or may not be on a train. I am the folks breath. I am the folks breath. The small yet all wrought abstract expressionist painting looked around by a Christian born in circa 64. All important, the foreground capped crossing all sly lazy black and white lost characters in the city. Floor. The poet is a sunway kind of sun, sun with a Sunday morning coming down together, heaven and far. Front line of the old earth for an hour present with Lichtenstein. Or a your old breakfast of strong coffee, cigarettes, vodka, without small talks or gestures of empty. Or a study of a self importance plan, from small and concrete addiction, sucking a hot sauce bottle in a stop at the end of the peer pressure. Or a short term is three but all the way up. Just the piss. Or a grainy dog eared grasp at someone else's grasp to help group mistakes are ever done. Oh. The review reads while fleet street, if 
by my soul, so say so myself. Though the production is all slop angry and pinched derivative. The film. Okay, thank you very much for, for sharing that with us, Mark. Um, we caught some of it, we didn't catch all of it, but I feel like we will get a recording of this and maybe post this separately uh, on the Scribblers Union page so people can hear this amazing poem in full. Um, but also at the same time, I fucking love the fact that we just tried to pull off doing a live poem, streaming it <laughs> onto Facebook from a train somewhere going across the country. Um, you don't get that anywhere else. You don't get that at professional poetry nights. That's just the Scribblers Union. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for, for that, Mark. That was great stuff. Okay, let's move on to our next guest of this evening. Please make lots of noise at home for Heather. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, Kevin. This, this particular poem is about waspy women. And for MD, it doesn't even know what a waspy woman is. Waspy stands for women against state pension inequality. And it's basically about all these women that were born in the 50s and who retired and went to lift their state pension to discover that this government has decided they're going to withhold it for either six or seven years, depending on when in the 50s they were born. And the first these women knew about it was when they went to lift their pension. So this is called Waspy Women, and it's for all these women. I'm a waspy woman, a pensioner without a pension. I'm your mother, your sister, your granny, your wife. I punched the clock for 44 years in a job that consumed most of my life as I waited for its expired shelf life. I'm a teacher, a carer, a cleaner, a shopkeeper. I toiled away for an honest day's pay. I played the game, put money in the pocket, pulled a lever to spin and said, sorry. You have been unlucky. These hands shaped and carved profit for the money men. Now, these hands are arthritic and my old bones crick and creak as I walk down the street, but these hands no carry the can for a government's failed pension plan. A contract. Both sides knew the rule, but the DWP decided to take his offer, fools, and with a stroke of their pen, they stole my pride and forced me back on the tools to get tax breaks. Your private schools is austerity. They use to keep us in line. I'm shackled to my overdraft, my retirement is well and truly crushed. It's visits to the food bank, it's no money in the meter, it's wearing your coat indoors as you pray to St. Peter. They say, to bring us into alignment, which us against our own men folk. <laughs> no, they underestimate our survival. Because we're all stony broken, his working place. They lie idle. I'm a fridge with one onion. I'm a tea bag used twice. It's crumbs off the table. It's going to bed with your coat on. It's austerity. Where I sit at your table. So I'm a waspy woman. A waspy woman. A waspy woman with a sting in my tail. Thank you. Whoa, thank you very much, Heather. Brilliant stuff. And yeah, I feel like such an important issue to be bringing to, to people's kind of attention as well if they don't already know about that and the fucking the shit this government is trying to pull, then please, yeah, educate yourself and, and Google it and have a look and see the full extent of it. Um, but yeah, to take something like that and create such a, a vital and engaging piece of art 
I love that that's what it's all about. And poetry is so great for that. Poetry just gives us the, the ability to, to express ourselves in this wee space, um, but to really change people's minds and opinions. Uh, so yeah, fantastic work. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Heather. Um, if you're just joining us just now, uh, this is the Scribblers Union live. We are doing a, a kind of live stream of a, a digital gig. We're going to be going around the members of the Scribblers Union in this group. They're going to be performing a poem each for you. Uh, and it's just going to be brilliant work all through the evening. All you need to do is sit back and relax. Um, if you'd like to engage with us, please jump in the comments. Let us know what you're liking. Let us know what you're loving. And also do us a favour and hit the share button and get this brilliant performance out to as many people as you can. We'd love as many people to see it as possible. Okay. Let's get on to our next guest of this evening. Please make lots of noise at home for Lom. Good evening. Um, I call this piece Electrica Demos. We stand amongst the carnage, flesh and bone and glass and steel. Oil seeps through, forming a greasy shallow pool. Roars echo in the distance. Jaws ache with mournful howls. Of the unknowable, I am afraid. Horror grips me and I weep. War engulfs my fractured mind. Machine or something once human. Who can determine the difference? Feed my paranoia. It is always hungry. With time, the nightmares may subside. Understanding becoming translucent. But for now, we run like innocent children till we sleep forever deep in the bloodied soil. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for sharing that with us, Lon. Amazing, rich, deep language um, and a real heart of darkness with that one as well, uh, which is definitely in line with the season. So yeah, thank you very much for sharing that with us, Lon. Fantastic work. And as you probably notice now, watching us, we have such a variation of work. We have such a variation in styles and uh, subject matter. And that's because the Scribblers Union isn't just people from one place or one walk of life. The Scribblers Union is open to everybody. And because of that, we have so many different lived experiences and so many different poems coming from different places. So yeah, please uh, look out for that throughout the night. and. Uh, yeah, maybe just appreciate that, that this isn't your homogenized kind of poetry night where everyone stands up and does a slam poem and everybody clicks their fingers. This is something a wee bit different. This is people's real proper lived experiences coming to the fore with their own unique poetic voices bringing it there. So yeah, brilliant stuff. Let's move on to our next guest of this evening. Please make lots of noise at home for Cat. Hi everybody, thanks so much for coming. Um, this is a, a poem that's partly been inspired by another scribbler, uh, the amazing Laura Graham or Queen Laura, as I call her. Um, she's written a, an amazing poem about the perimenopause, which I'll put in the chat after I've finished. And this is like a bit of a response to that or a companion piece. And it's also inspired there by the amazing Heather, who you've already heard, who gave us a prompt one week to write a set of instructions as a poem. So this is a um, manual for a perimenopausal body. The alternative title being Peri Peri. This information is embargoed, not to be discussed in schools or even taught to doctors. It's kinder for your owner not to know what's on the way. Activate this protocol sometime around the fifth decade of life or sooner if you need to. First, titrate a brand new hormone cocktail. Fumigate the brain cells daily. Hammer the rage geezer deep into amygdala. Return sex drive to just met settings to really confuse any long-term partners. 
wire thermostat to the random number generator, increase sensitivity of sprinklers and cooling systems, at night deploy battalions of subdermal ants patrolling each appendage with fire spiked feet to keep sleep away. Amplify palpitations just to prove the heart still beats. Send waves of blood to flood without a warning. Desiccate main drainage delta until it hurts to even dab. There's no cheap, neat blue pill to perk them up. Just mistrusted drugs they'd have to fight to get prescribed. So prepare to process Holland and Barrett's best, black cohosh, sage, red clover, flaxseed, wild yam, eyes of flavour and turmeric tea. We expect that they won't make a fuss amidst the banter, stigma, jokes about hot flushes. They'll quietly fade, become invisible and slink away out of the workplace, leaving space for clearer, rational brains to take control. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kat. A fantastic poem and uh, I so love that it came out of one of the classes and one of the great prompts that, that one of our members brought to the table and, and it inspired such a great piece of work. So yeah, beautiful. Thank you very much, Kat. Brilliant stuff. Oh. If you're not already blown away, then I don't know what's up with you because we've just had so many fantastic poems already. You know, this is this is what it's all about. And um, for me as a kind of founder and a kind of facilitator of Scribbles Union, what a privilege it is for me to just sit back and enjoy it. You know, I get to just introduce people and read a couple of poems, but I also get to sit here and just hear all this fantastic poetry. Uh, and remember that I've seen it at different stages and where it came from and how it's got here uh, into this beautiful finished piece that you're all savouring tonight. So yeah, what a privilege it is to, to be part of this group. And yeah, I hope you're all feeling the, the same at home. Okay, let's get our next guest up to the stage. Please make lots of noise at home for the fantastic Rebbe. Hello. So I'm going to read a poem that before I joined Scribblers, I had the first four lines on my phone already, and it's taken me the entire time I've been with the Scribblers Union to get this out. So this is called Fraud. I am a complete and utter fraud. I act like I know what's what. But last week I bought a pint of Boom and was intensely pissed off that it didn't taste like Fanta. I bought a bottle of Merlot because I thought it would be like Ribena. I asked a fit lad to zip me up, even though I could do it myself to the top. My CV is a fallacy. I've curated the perfect vision of me, but the real one that only I can see is a million miles away. I say I can play ukulele when what I really mean is I know a chord or two. I chew on food I don't like because I want the person in front of me to think she's all right. I itch when I use mint shampoo, but I buy it anyway because I know that you do too and I wanna get that smell of you every time my hair gets in my eyes. I lie most of the time. I pretend I'm a poet, but what I really do the most is consult a dictionary of rhyme online. The birthday cakes I bake are just store-bought sponges from Asda. I'll ask you to taste it as if I made it especially for you. Even the icing is pre-made. I will tell you in confidence that I have been laid by fewer than 10 men, and that is just a lie once again. I make it up on a whim. I do not make banks selling MLM milkshakes and I was not an extra in Crank. Those photos with Jason Statham, they're all photoshopped and fake. 
My nose is not this shape and I'm about 10 pounds heavier than I seem to appear in my posts on social media. I do not know my real hair color. I do not know my real dad. I don't know what it means to feel happy or sad because after the life that I've lived and the life that I've had, I don't know what's real to me and what is just a fad. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I hate. I don't think I could tell you what it is I do that's great or at least how I see it. At least how I feel when I look in my mirror and I can't tell what's real. I kneel at an altar of falsehood and fakery, making a mockery of the starkness of reality. It is really easy to pretend when I can filter what's in front of me and skew my view of everything I live through and do it for free. Fancy apps make drab snapshots technicolor, spin the world on its head and give glum scenes a makeover. Come on now, give over. We've lost sight of each other and now I can't recognize who I see in the mirror and I am sick of pretending. I am sick of amending my life to appease the world out there searching for commendation. A Ranjaboom doesn't taste like fucking Fanta and though it's made of berries, Merlot tastes like wine. It's fine, but I prefer a Coke with cherries. It is fine to stop the sham time to halt the scam, time to present myself to the world outside of Instagram. This is me, just me. My skin is really rough, but I've had enough of filters and I've had enough of fluff. I have got a belly, I've got scars. I like drinking in old man bars. My Doc Martins are all secondhand and I've now got a really deep hatred of cars. I do that wobbly thing with my knee. And if I laugh too hard or use a trampoline, I might do a little wee because I had a nine pound baby, you see. And there I am, no longer in roll, unfiltered, uncensored and totally whole. And you may not like me, you might not even care. But too many of us are too scared to be bare. So let's make a star. Let's open our hearts to a world where we focus on more than our parts. Life isn't a film set. We are not actors. Existence is more than just material factors. So come on, chuck out the costumes, throw away the script, Turn off your smartphone. Come outside with me. Let's live. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Rebbe. Um, and I felt super relatable for, for many of us uh, on lots of different levels. So yeah, beautiful work. And also thank you for just reminding me about the existence of Boom, which I haven't drank in about five years. <laughs> since they stopped selling it for a couple of pounds at the Flying Duck. Um, and also the film Crank, which I never thought would ever get a mention in a poem, but but here we are. We're, we're here to break down barriers at the Scribbles Union, and that, that was one that I didn't know needed to be broken, but, but here we are. Broken it is nonetheless. Thank you very much for sharing that. Okay, we're going to have a, a wee break now. Um, give you time to catch your breath after this amazing poetry that you've experienced. We're halfway through our evening now. Um, so go get yourself a drink, go have a pee, chill out, and I'm just going to plug some stuff while that's happening, okay? Um, the first thing we want to plug, of course, is the, the Scribbles Union, Volume 1, the anthology that we, we brought out last year. Um, you can get your copy of that on the, the evil website, Amazon. Um, if you go there and you type in Scribbles Union, you'll be able to find that uh, and you'll be able to, to get your own copy. It's full of fantastic poems um, and also a couple of wee writing exercises as well, if you want to give it a go yourself. So yeah, it's a brilliant book and obviously I, I couldn't recommend it more. And it was something that I was very kind of proud to, to get together. So. Yeah, have a wee look at the, the Scribbles Union Volume 1 if you get a chance. Um, we're also going to be live and in person um, 
on the 6th of November, which isn't long at all. I think that's like a, a week and a bit away. Um, come join us. It's going to be great. This is Glasgow based. So if you're in Glasgow, um, we want you to come along to the 14th note, 6th of November. Only six quid a ticket, which is an absolute steal for a night of entertainment. Six quid's nothing. Um, barely get a pint for that nowadays. So, yeah, come along and, and check us out. We're going to be at the 13th note um, downstairs in the basement. It's going to be brilliant. There's going to be poetry from Scribbler's members, including Heather, who you saw earlier. Um, we're going to have special guests, including the comedian Richard Brown, who's a fantastic, amazing alternative comedian, and also a headline set from the ever amazing Iona Lee, one of Scotland's best. So, yeah, come and join us at the 13th note, 6th of November. We're going to be there after the COP protests. So, please, I encourage you to go out during the day, make your voice heard, be part of the protest. Uh, and then come and join us for a night of spoken word afterwards. I couldn't think of a, a better, more politically engaged day that you could have uh, with a few pints in between, obviously. So, yeah, come and join us at the 14th note. The other thing to plug is uh, me. I'm just plugging myself now. Uh, <laughs> please go check out my own work, uh, Kevin Peagle Day. You, if you Google me, you'll get all sorts of weird stuff up there. Um including uh, some kind of short films I've worked on, some theatre stuff, some poetry stuff, um, all the kind of projects that I've been part of. If you go to my website, kevinpeagleday.com, you can also read more about it there uh, and also see where I'm going to be next, all the gigs that I've got coming up. And if you want to, to kind of come and see me in person, that's where to, to check out if I'm going to be in your area anytime soon. Um, yeah, I think that's about it in terms of the plugging. Sorry for that, but we need to do this. It's part of the deal. Um, are we ready to get back to the show? Are we ready to get back to the talent? Yes. Okay. I I'm going to start you off with a wee poem in this half, and then we'll take it from there, and we'll bring our amazing Scribbles union members back in for some more fantastic poetry throughout this evening. But... Let me do this wee one for you first. Um, this is a poem about kind of Sunday afternoon anxiety, Sunday afternoon fear, uh, and how I've tried to combat it the last wee while by, uh, by running about uh, in Lycra during Sundays. Uh, I don't know if it's made it better or worse, to be honest with you, but yeah, here's a poem about it anyway. It's called Personal Best. On Sundays, I lace up sky blue trainers and attempt to outrun my anxiety. I race on we around the city as the weekend's dregs are drunk by those who do not want it to end. I carry a week of trouble in my underdeveloped muscles. Thursday's quiet drinks became Saturday's session and suddenly Sunday is a lonely place, an ellipsis at the end of my week, with a nagging question that asks, how many do I have left? An app informs me I have run very far indeed and past many fellow lycra-clad apparitions on my destination-less journey. Fluorescent wraiths drifting across the spare ground, searching for life in the downtown lights. There is the illusion of freedom here, a placebo of control. I decide what streets to paternally beat with the free jazz strokes of my feet. How fast the life moves, curling around me like a zoetrope. I am the master of my destiny until my legs begin to fail me. And reward is earned. An hour-long high aroused into being by a heady translation of chemicals, mixing and mingling in my brain like a cheap cocktail. And the come down is inevitable, that potent potion disassembling itself, one pleasure-loving molecule at a time. 
leaving me to contemplate with cruel clarity the unyielding loneliness of existence in the dark. On nights like this, the city cocoons itself and an autumnal glaze, air filled with damp smoke and half-lit graffiti on crumbling walls. The esoteric messages of apprentice gangsters, now grown up, selling insurance in call centres and lacing up sky blue trainers on a Sunday. Thank you. Okay, let's get into the talent. Let's get back in with the Scribblers Union. Please welcome to the stage the amazing, fantastic Donna. Thanks so much, Kev. Um, so this poem, I got to run a session with my amazing fellow Scribblers and the prompt that I set was why poetry? Uh, so this piece come, come out of that and it's called Beginnings. The dice ebbed towards the horizon, flowed back the same conclusion for the umpteenth time. But society's got a lot to say about women of a certain age with birth marks, birth, birth scars and stretch marks. So I stay, kept holding space to fill with laundry and circular thoughts, settled for the elation of a clean home on chores day, collected calendar crosses on significant dates until I remembered. I wanted to rip my face off and run away. And so it began with thoughts of life raft, spent double in the dappled sunlight of the garden, holding a voice saying what it was gonna take away. After months of pounding the same 12 streets, carrying two stone of baby weight, four years after that 4 a.m. cesarean, how can life's domestic treadmill shape flesh so unwell? Each dawn realisation of no sleep, breakfast is a curt, quick indignation, personal space, a negotiation, identity, nothing but work, life, stress, marital bliss, and existence at best, as I held in every breath. Because I don't love my husband anymore. Death, I said it. But my sun rises on glimpses of joy, a swim to the distant boy to press my nose against the crown of his head, ingest just enough love for the next stretch, for I am his safety, created it that way deep in my waters, and his heart is tethered to me. But life felt small, and the ordinary had no wonder, and I had no voice unless in relation to another. So I threw out my words like jetsam, the words that caused the most pain, that shouted screech, tire, rage in the safest space like those days when I reached out for him to hold me and he couldn't even touch my shoulder. And so it was done and summer had just begun and I was grounded in inky black but bleached to bones, no sun-kissed skin, no tender caress, just mountains of living to make sense of salvage debris and currents stretching back decades, reaching down lungs for a transformation only a reckoning could enact. A sudden sensory salutation, then a momentary silence in the eye of the elements before my fight to write the ordinary extraordinary again. So I braced, grabbed hold of pen and dear heart as atmospheres kicked my diaphragm line by line every bend and sweep of nib pulled tight salt wounds i moved slowly around nouns i learned i could not steer my purpose verbs a siren call to action between glottal stops and weighted synonyms some pushing others pulling until all i could hear was the rage of my own fire scorching oil slicked ocean before i surfaced rebirth filled my chest and spoke my poetry at last. Thank you. Whoa, amazing stuff. Thank you very much for that, Donna. Um, yeah, just fantastic work and really powerful, vital. Do you know what I mean? That's what poetry is all about. Do you know what I mean? Poetry that, that gives you a wee cuddle and then punches you in the face. That's what we want. Uh, so yeah, brilliant stuff, Donna. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, we're going to go on to our next guest of this evening now. We're just bartering through it. We've got all this amazing poetry just 
unfolding in front of us. So please make lots of noise at home for William. Uh, this piece is called Make the Floor Shake. 2008, datingdirect.com is how I meet Jane, Jared's mum. I call them the Jays. And before you know it, Jared and I have a favourite TV programme. It's called The Stupid Show. The stupidity of the scenes comes out of the screen and infects everything. The carpet and the curtains and everything in between. Jane comes in and asks, what are you doing? Because we laugh until we get a tummy ache. We make the floor shake. 2021, Sunday the 23rd of May. Commentary running from me by text to Jared. Rodrigo scores on 17, then Harrison has a goal disallowed for offside. Phillips on 42, penalty kick for Leeds. Bamford on 78, goal, 3-0. Silly goal conceded, full time, 3-1. The crowd goes wild. They make the floor shake. Let's go back to Elland Road. Let's play Bielsa ball and hit them on the break. Six men in their box. We are the loudest crowd and we are proud. So let's jump around. Let us celebrate and make the floor shake. Friday, the 4th of June. Tegan gives him a booty call. She takes a taxi at her own expense to the street where he lives. They make the floor shake. Saturday, 5th of June. Jared and I go to the rock factory to buy a bass guitar and amp. Jared takes it home. He turns up the volume, hits the overdrive to test the structure of the house. He sends me a text. I turned it up and it really made the floor shake. He died of an epileptic seizure nine days before his 21st birthday. Horbury Members Club, not with bass guitars or jumping around, but with the hugs and the pints and the footfall and more hugs and more pints, we make the floor shake. When we get home, we start all over again not with bass guitars or jumping around. We shake the floor with our tears. Again and again, with a certain frequency that the neighbours don't complain about, we will make the floor shake. Amazing stuff. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, William. Absolutely beautiful poem and yeah just fantastic and i think we we kind of all felt the 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 that resonating throughout us and kind of going through us and yeah just powerful powerful work thank you so much for sharing that with us william fantastic stuff oh we just it just keeps coming doesn't it it just keeps coming and we keep on going oh this this poem's great and that poem's great and and everyone keeps on just coming up to the digital stage and, and blowing us away and, and giving us something else to think about or something else to feel. Uh, and it's just brilliant. What, what a privilege it is to, to be here and, and hosting this fantastic night. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Okay, let's move on to, to our next guest. Let's go for a complete whiplash in terms of our tone. <laughs> That's what it's all about as well. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Ryan. All righty. <laughs> um, so this was kind of inspired um, from a little prompt we had in Scribbler Junior about surrealism. Um, and this poem is called A Word from Our Sponsors. Friends, bastards, lovers and enemies of the state, welcome back. Here I am your humble host of the apocalypse and your forever friend. But first, 
a quick word from our sponsors. Here on the other side of the gap, on the glass the skeleton crew watches oblivion for you so you can pay attention to me the host and our sponsors and here i have to tell you about our subscriptions to unlimited power and omnipotence payable and in installments of broken records and empty medicine bottles for the total price of your sanity on tonight's episode our lucky contestant is you audience Tell our fabulous friends of the faceless variety of your stock shelf life and empty dreams. They all had one too. As your lucky host here in the never ending darkness, I get to tell you our theme. Our theme is vanished. It is empty, it is never ending, it is continuous. And just like we vanished you last time, our host is here to welcome you and our audience is here to laugh, but you don't remember that. So let's walk on down and let's look at what's behind door number one. It's the never ending self-awareness your therapist warned you about, your friends love it, your mother hates it. And well, we here at the studio, we think it's great. Behind door number two is the overwhelming guilt of being alive. It will consume you whole and it will continue forever as long as you are aware of it. And finally, behind door number three, now, audience, we like door number three here in the studio because our contestant has never managed to win door number three. When you open it, it is the endless void. It is a never-ending darkness, and our sponsors tell us behind that is the real you. But you've never known the real you, so that's fine. You don't need to worry about door number three. So, folks, let's put our hands together and let's get ready to laugh at our lucky contestant. So, buckle in. Keep yourself in your seats, hands and feet in the right at all times. And remember to thank our sponsors here and the never ending dark and me, your host. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Ryan. Thank you very much for, for taking us on that ride, a roller coaster through your subconscious. Who, who can say no to that journey? Um, so great. And uh, and who doesn't have some doors in our heads, some with voids, some without? It's all good. Uh, and yeah, brilliant stuff. And, and like I've been saying, the the kind of variation of, of theme throughout our evening has just been fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Um, if you're just joining us just now, thank you very much. You're probably like, what what, what is going on here? What is happening? <laughs> this is the Scribbles Union. We're doing a live poetry performance for you this evening. Um, this is all new work from this particular cohort of Scribbles Union members. Uh, if you're enjoying it, which of course you are, please uh, engage with us a wee bit in the comments. Let us know what you're liking, what you're loving. And of course, hit the share button, get that shared and get it out into the world for more people to, to have their brains blown apart by how amazing this work is. Okay, let's go on to our next guest of this evening. Please make lots of noise at home for Kat. Okay. Um, so the wonderful Rebbe who you heard earlier is um, putting together a zine about periods, which looks amazing. And uh, was asking for contributions a while back. So I wrote this one uh, and it's called 16 years during which I failed to accept my period into my life. Age 11. In the bathroom, I pulled down my Hello Kitty pajamas to find a dark red spot in the corner of Kitty's ear. Age 12. I am staying with a host family on a school trip to make me spaghetti when I feel homesick. One night I wade through to the bed sheet and without the words to tell them, slide the shame into the front pocket of my suitcase and pull the zip shut. Age 13. I look so ill, my registration teacher sends me home when I throw up from pain that feels like a tsunami. It's June, and afterwards, I lie on the couch watching two people hit a ball back and forth while I brace against the waves. I still find tennis really comforting. Age 14. On an overnight ferry, I tell everyone I'm seasick so I can go back to my bunk and ride in peace. Age 18. 
My friend tells me about moon cups with stars in her eyes. I try one but can't get it to fit me and my failure feels like a burning rainforest. Age 20. Eight weeks after I last took the pill, I go to the doctors wearing a bell jar and a deep sense of hopelessness. They send me away with a list of websites so I can see if anything resonates. At home, I open my laptop and wonder if moodjuice.com would have saved Sylvia. Age 27. I tear up an article telling me to take a relaxing bath before leaving for a 13 hour shift, pannier bag stuffed with pads and painkillers and a dark cloud that won't budge for three more days. Maybe I'll have the bath then. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kat. Uh, and so lovely to hear that that's been written and uh, as part of a, a project that the Reb is running as well. I love all the, the cross-pollination between members and the collaboration that comes out of, of these classes. So, yeah, beautiful stuff. Uh, what a great poem to, to appear in it as well. Um, yeah, just fantastic words and, and beautiful images. Thank you. Um, okay, we've all got a couple more. We've battled through it. We've just been like overwhelmed with, with fantastic poetry this evening. Um, yeah, I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am at home. Um, let's go to our next guest of this evening then, our next Scribbles member. Please make lots of noise at home for Kirsty. Hey. Hey. This poem is called A New Medication. On the eve of a new medication, I pray to a God I don't quite believe in for a miracle of modern science and hope they enjoy the irony of my request. I pray for my sanity, wish for its imminent return. I pray for a quick recovery and minimal side effects. On the eve of a new medication, I get out my books and try to study my disease try to understand the SSRIs from the SNRIs and the MAOIs in the futile hope that the more I know about these chemicals, the less they can hurt me. I scour r slash bipolar, reading the subjective opinions of strangers on the internet, try to spin them into the cold hard fact that I will be okay. I cross my fingers and all of my toes Will this be the one to finally keep its promise? I try to predict the future, try to imagine a better, more stable existence. On the eve of a new medication, I say its name aloud, taste its syllables on my tongue, try to twist them into something palatable. Years of therapy has taught me to name is to tame, and so I whisper it under my breath. A wish, a secret, a promise, a magical incantation. It fixes her. On the eve of a new medication, I try to sleep, try to drift into dreams of tomorrow when I will take the damned pill and hope it is not better to swallow. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsty. Um, a beautiful poem and... Yeah, I, again, I feel like one that there's probably a lot of us can relate to on different levels and in different ways. And I, I'm always banging on about the that sweet spot in between the personal and the universal when something is so personal to a person that only they could have written it, but has universal appeal and, and resonates with us all, no matter who we are. And that felt like one of those poems that it was hitting that that perfect balance in between. So yeah, brilliant stuff, Kirsty. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And we're now on our last member of this evening. We've we've battled through it. We've heard beautiful poetry throughout this evening. Uh, and we're going to get one more fantastic poem from a Scribbles member. So please make lots of noise at home. Go wild for Lindsay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I've 
got a Halloween themed poem for you tonight um, that was written as part of one of the Scribblers Union sessions. It's called Burnt Dead. They strangled me before they set my earthly form alight. Maybe they were trying to trap my words, confine them to my weary bones, twist me, bottleneck me, hoping they could silence me, set me on fire, but not ignite me, illuminate me so that I would transcend time. They knew not of my boundless energy, the silent spells that seeped from my very pores that one day would catch on an autumn breeze that would fall with the warm rain that would glisten in the amber leaves that would penetrate the senses of my ancestors. That's you, you're the ancestor. Their chants will be protest, their potions will be medicine, their solitude, perfect introversion, their predictions, foresight, their medium psychology, their sorcery, Poetry, alchemy to the page, for can you feel the energy change? They cannot be silenced, and if you try, the magic will burst from their very pores over and over again, because you will never strangle a sisterhood. Thank you. Whoa. What a, what a piece to end our evening on. I love it. And yeah, this is this is alchemy. This is something special. Uh, I hope that you felt that tonight as well, the, the incredible power of poetry and what some words read with real passion and real meaning can, can do to you and make you feel. Uh, yeah, and just what a brilliant example of that from Lindsay there. A, a fantastic, powerful piece to end our evening on. Uh, yeah, all that's left to do is just to say a, a thank you to, to everyone that's been watching tonight. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, if you've enjoyed this, then you can go and check out the video section on the Facebook page, uh, and it'll actually have the, the videos up from last week's gigs. So those will be there, and also previous nights as well. So you can go back, check out some of our poems. We have a real wealth of kind of uh, videos building up there in our archive. Um, also, if you check out my Facebook page, some of them are there as well from, from where we used to do it previously. So, yeah, you can go check it out. There's lots of fantastic poetry um, that's kind of been captured uh, as part of the Scribblers Union digital gigs. And if you want to see some more, we're also back tomorrow night. Tomorrow here, same place, 7pm, with the last of our digital gig series. Um, it's going to be amazing. I feel like the the standard's just been amazing throughout the, the last week or two that we've been doing this. And tonight's been no different. It's just been sky high. That bar is so high now. Um, it's quite kind of worrying. I don't know where we go next. We just keep on pushing. We keep on making amazing poetry and we keep on challenging ourselves. Uh, so yeah, come and be a part of it. Come and uh, watch the the fantastic talent that's coming out of the Scribblers Union. If you feel inspired to be part of this, there is, I think, maybe one or two spaces in our in our classes that are kind of open just now. Get in touch with us via email if this is something that you think you might want to be a part of, something that is, you've maybe been inspired by tonight and now you want to be part of it too. Okay, I'm going to read a quick poem and then we'll we'll get on our way. This is a poem about that moment, that feeling that you have when when a guy comes round to your house to, to fix your boiler, but you're not really sure what to say to him. It's called There's a Worky in my house. There's a worky in my house. And he's fixing the boiler or something. I'm not too sure. But he wears overalls and boots just like my dad. There's a worky 
in my house. And I should probably offer him tea. But that seems offensive. When did we decide that all workies like tea? There's a workie in my house. And I'm watching him work in silence. It got really weird over a minute ago. There's a workie in my house. And he's about my age, so he should really know the score. Follow the rules, mate. Ask me if I saw the game. If I saw the game last night, will that team were shite and the manager will soon be on his way? They spent millions on that guy and all he does is fucking dive and at least then I'd have something to say. There's a workie in my house and I wonder if he judges wallpaper and furniture. Probably not. I'll have seen worse than mine. There's a workie in my house and he knows all about it. Pipes and stuff. But all I can do is write bad poetry. There's a workie in my house and I really shouldn't feel this level of angst, existential or Otherwise, because he does something useful, just like my dad. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for being part of the Scribbles Union Live Night Free. Let's give a big round of applause to all the amazing artists you've seen tonight. That was Anne. That was Mark. That was Heather. That was Lorne. That was Kat. That was Rebby, that was Donna, William, Ryan, Kat, Kirsty, and Lindsay. An amazing, amazing group of poets and artists. I've been your host for this evening, Kevin Peagle Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us again next time here at the Scribblers Union. Until then, look after yourself and keep safe. Cheers. See you next time. <laughs>